Would you ever fly the cheapest airline possible? Because according to Google, Swoop is considered to be one of the world's cheapest airlines. But does this mean they're gonna be good or will they actually be horrible? Well, today I'm gonna be flying Swoop to see what they're really like, but the reviews are slightly concerning. Apparently, some people found the airline to be okay, while others complained about cancellations, overpriced bags, and some even claimed it was the worst experience of their life. So just like my other airline videos, we're gonna be going on two Swoop flights to see what the airline is really like. And as usual, since it's 24 hours before the flight, the very first thing we need to do is the check-in process. But this time, something crazy happened. So as usual, the first thing I did was put in my booking reference and last name before being brought to the flight summary and seat selection, which I decided to skip because I cannot justify paying extra just to pick a seat. Anyways, after that, they tried to sell me additional bags, which for some reason had checked and carry-on bags at the same price, so I decided to skip this. And after agreeing that I had nothing dangerous, I was fully checked in for my flight. So honestly, at this point, Swoop is doing way better than all of the other airlines I've previously flown. But as always, something usually goes wrong during these videos, so I'm not gonna speak too soon. So after a good night's sleep, I woke up at 5.30 in the morning to head to the airport, and things got off to a pretty bad start. You know, yesterday when I said things would probably go wrong, well, guess what? Things already are because my Uber driver decided to cancel on me. Uh, let's hope the flight goes better. So after leaving my house, I made my way to Union Station, where I'd be able to catch the train from downtown Toronto to the airport. Have a great day. And so the adventure begins. You know, I'm starting to realize that every time I do these budget airline videos, the flights are always first thing in the morning. I honestly don't know why that is. I think it's something to do with Canadian airports. But if any of you guys know, let me know down in the comments. But anyways, last night when I was checking in, they actually ended up assigning me the middle seat, but I would much prefer the aisle or window. So basically the plan is gonna be, as soon as we get to the airport, we're gonna go to the check-in desk and see if they'll end up switching the seats for me. And on top of that, it's also gonna be a great first-hand experience of how their customer service is like, and hopefully they could change the seats for me. But knowing my luck with these videos, it's probably not gonna happen. So after leaving Union Station and riding the train for about 25 minutes, I ended up at the airport. And as soon as I got off the train, the first thing I did was head to the check-in desk to finally see if they'd let me change my seats or not. Morning. Morning. So I'm on a flight to Abbotsford, BC. I think it's at 9.30 in the morning. I checked in online. Is there a possibility to maybe switch seats now if there's availability? Uh, I think 30E. It's just a middle seat. If there's any aisles or maybe windows available. Yep, that's me. Uh, yeah, window or aisle. Any, either works. But uh, there are some charges. There is? Yeah, $32 for one seat. Okay, I'll, I'll, I think I'll just leave it then. You know what, at the gate, once the flight gets closed, then I have seats available. And okay, and is the gates the ones down there over here? Just uh, after 8.45, just come to see me at the gate. Actually, you know what, actually, we don't need that. Are you a vlogger? Yeah, I'm a vlogger. So, you need or I am? Um, probably a window. Just regard that one. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Honestly, I was not expecting them to be able to change it, but they actually did. So far, Swoop customer service is actually way better than I expected. So after making my way through security, I made my way towards the gate only to realize I was in the same crappy terminal that I was in when I made my video about Canada's worst airline. Okay, so I am honestly quite surprised at how well this experience has been going so far. First of all, unlike other airlines I've flown like Flair or Spirit, the online check-in process was super easy and it actually worked this time. And on top of that, even though people were complaining about customer service saying it was bad, in my experience, it was actually really good so far. But now the one thing that I do wanna mention is I think I got a little bit of privilege when it came to the seat change because she saw that I was recording video and then it went from you have to pay extra to you know what, we'll do it anyways. But regardless, it was actually a super nice gesture and I definitely appreciated it. Now anyways, while I'm waiting here to board my flight, I thought now would be a really good time to tell you guys some extra facts about Swoop. So number one, Swoop is actually one of Canada's newest airlines. It was only created back in 2018, but it's actually owned by WestJet, which is Canada's second biggest airline. So it's pretty much like their budget sister company. Number two, Swoop has a total of 16 aircraft, with 10 being the 737-800 and the other six being the 737 MAX 8. And again, those were the ones that crashed a few years ago. And finally, number three, Swoop recently broke a record of 10,000 passengers in a day, which for airlines is actually a really big milestone because it means the company is growing and it's not going to 
going backwards. But anyways, it is now finally time to board the flight and it's time to see if Swoop is really as bad as the reviews say or if it's actually good. So after making sure my flight was still on time, I made my way towards the gate only to realize the flight was on Swoop 737 Max 8. After getting my boarding pass scanned, I headed towards the plane and noticed I was sat in the $29 section. But I won't lie, I was actually really excited for this flight. Right off the bat, I noticed Swoop's pink branding all over the plane, from headrest covers to wall decals, and after getting to my seat, it turned out I was lucky enough to have the entire row to myself. The first thing I noticed was there was tons of legroom for all three seats, with lots of room for bags, and even the overhead bins were massive as well. But anyway, since this flight was quite empty, the plane boarded super fast, and after heading to de-icing and getting fully sprayed down, we ended up taking off about 25 minutes late. But now it was time to see what else this plane had in store. First off, there was no in-flight entertainment, and the storage on the seats were kind of small, but there were massive tray tables, super nice LED lightings, and the best part was that the seats actually reclined. But sadly, this didn't help when trying to get some sleep on the flight. All right, so now that we're about halfway through the flight, I thought that now would be a good time to give a little bit of a review on the seats. So right off the bat, this is the longest budget airline flight I've flown at four hours, and my back is definitely starting to feel it. Now, I wouldn't say this is the worst seat I have ever sat on, but it definitely isn't one of the best. But one thing I will give a massive credit for is that you could actually recline this seat unlike any of the other budget airlines I've flown. And considering there's two hours left on this flight, hopefully my back doesn't end up getting destroyed. So now that I was really starting to feel these seats, I decided to get up and check out what the bathrooms were like. First, I went to the front of the plane's bathroom, which had everything you would need, and it was super clean. But as for the bathroom at the back of the plane, it was similar in design, but it was quite dirty, and the sink didn't even work. But anyways, after flying over the Rocky Mountains, it was now time for landing. But remember, this is only the first of two flights, and the second one turned out to be way different than I would have ever thought. Well, that flight was definitely surprising. Right off the bat, that was only the first of two flights, and there's definitely some things we should probably talk about. So right off the bat, I can confirm that the seats were not comfortable the rest of the way, and my back is pretty destroyed right now. But now that's not to say that there definitely weren't any problems, because there certainly were. For example, on that plane in particular, and all the Max 8 models apparently, there are no outlets, Wi-Fi, or basically anything that you would expect. But apparently on the regular 737-800 models, they do have all those things for some reason. But now one thing that I don't think I've mentioned about any other airline is that the cabin crew was literally a 10 out of 10 on that flight. Now obviously it's hard to say that they're all going to be great because that's just not the reality of things. Like every single flight is going to be different no matter what airline, but the one that I was on in particular was really, really good. But again, that was only the first flight and we still have the second flight to go to decide if it's actually a good or bad airline. And this time it's supposed to be on the 737-800, so hopefully there's Wi-Fi and power outlets. So after an eight hour layover and an hour and a half delay, it was finally time for flight number two on Swoop's other style of aircraft, the 737-800. Right off the bat, this plane had the same Swoop branding as the last flight, but as you can see, the seats and plane itself were quite ancient. This flight seating was in a three by three configuration for the entire cabin with no cool LED lights and the seats themselves have definitely seen better days. All wasn't bad though, because there was lots of leg room, the overhead bins were acceptable, and this flight had outlets and Wi-Fi, which is a huge plus. And one thing I will mention is that this flight was kind of dirty and the tray tables had definitely seen better days, but I think this was mainly due to the fact of the quick time between the flight that had just landed and this one. But despite the seats looking dated, they really surprised me. First off, unlike the previous flight, these seats didn't recline at all, but they were super comfy, had a full-size padded headrest, working AC, and even even super large windows as well. But now one question remains, is Swoop a good or a bad airline? Well, as long as you understand that Swoop is kind of a budget airline, then I have to say it is actually really good. And pretty much the only downside I can think of are the baggage fees, but I mean, you're gonna get that on any budget airline you fly. But now if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys go check out this one next where I flew Canada's worst airline.